Almost live from Dunkirk, New York, it's Revitalized Dunkirk. Hi, Jim Fisher. Well, hello, Valerie. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. Where have we been? Um, Fighting the good fight? Uh, yeah. The, the no COVID fight? Sitting in our living rooms watching the world go by out front. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we've been sort of on a hiatus since yeah. March or February or March. Um, it's but, all a big fog. Yeah, it's <laughs> foggy, but we're back and we're getting back in gear. I know the board of directors has been meeting, correct? Right, yeah. And I would know that because I was there and you, of course, are play a pivotal role in Revitalized Dunkirk. Who are you, Jim Fisher? I'm El Presidente. And I'm Valerie Champlin. I, and we're also known as Bubbles and Edna for those fans of us who have, the, our fans have been clamoring for us to come back on air. Exactly. I, I, I've got so many requests. Like I know. When are you uh, going to be on? In fact, somebody reached out to me and said, you know, if Governor Cuomo can be on the air every day updating us about COVID, well, you and Jim should be on TV every, every Wednesday to tell us about COVID in Chautauqua County. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, so Jim, why is COVID known as COVID-19? Hmm, I... Uh, I know. Oh, do you? Because since March, we've gained about 19 pounds uh, that, from inactivity <laughs> with the situation as it is. So uh, I guess that, yeah. So that we had sense. to put on pause a number of our activities in Revitalized Dunkirk. Um, <clears throat> and some of those activities were naturally canceled or postponed or paused because we just couldn't take the chance of interactions. However, whenever it was safe to do so, we did have some programs and events that we're going to talk about a little bit that did happen right. as scheduled. Um, but talk about a little bit about our monthly meetings. We, we, uh, well, we, we haven't had any since, uh, uh, actually, the last meeting we had uh, was in February. Uh, since then, we were just about to have our March meeting, and the COVID happened, and so we shoved everything off the table. <laughs> and so we're not going to be probably having a meeting at least until after August because uh, our meeting place, the incubator, is That's right. shut down right now. And uh, it will be a while before they open it up. So we're and hoping they open for it up. For viewers now. who don't know, what is the incubator? It's like a chicken egg incubator or... Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of chickens. You can see them in <laughs> yeah, the window. That's right. <laughs> we're into that lately. <laughs> but, uh, the incubator is located at 214 Central Avenue. And it's uh, uh, a, a college building, a college uh, program where they uh, help uh, small businesses start they provide offices office space and like that and then uh you know they help them along the path of becoming more successful and it's a good central location for us to meet and they have very fine meeting rooms at the incubator so when we f refer to the incubator that's what we're talking about that's right. the fredonia technology incubator on central avenue all right so we've kind of put on pause our monthly meetings and i i thought we were going to try to possibly have an August meeting, but if not August, September, we're going to try right, to meet and right. do socially distancing and everybody's going to bring their... That's right. You know, you they're gotta, socially distanced. They're, see, we're... <laughs> right. And also their own sanitizers. Yeah, we got to have sanitizer. Right. Actually, that feels sort of good. <laughs> <laughs> so... I am sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be very cognizant of the precautions that we would need to take when we get together for meetings. Right. I know when the board meets, we meet outdoors. We're distanced from each other. Um, so we do take special... Uh, right. COVID precautions. So I think in the spring, wasn't there going to be a vote on new board members and new officers also? Right. That was uh, going to be happening with our April meeting, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Right. So when our first meeting, when we get back on schedule, it'll be a, a sort of a business meeting, getting everybody 
situated, uh, working on that and uh, like that. So Committee reports. Right. And some of the committees have been inactive. Some of them have been active. Right. And we'll get to that in a minute also. Um, so for our first meeting, whether it's August or September, getting back in the groove, so to speak, um, normally we have a special guest presenter. Um, I think... Think, I think the last presenter we had scheduled was for our March meeting, which did not happen. And that was going to be representatives from the Boys and Girls Club. So we're going to have them, we're going to host them again in the fall. So whether it's, it's probably September or October, we're going to invite the Boys and Girls Club representatives back to tell us what's happening with the Boys and Girls Club and what they've had to do with COVID also and how that's affected them programmatically and services to the kids in our city. So right. um, anything else about our meetings? I don't think so. I okay. think, that we, I mean, we're basically just penciling them in and like that. Right. So just getting started back on the, the path. To Another heaven. event that we had scheduled for April during Earth Day week um, was we were going to have another citywide cleanup, correct? Right. And those have been very successful in the past. Jim, you want to tell the, our viewers what happens at a citywide cleanup? And it's open to the public, and we love volunteers. Right. And, yeah, yeah, come on down when we have another one, maybe in the fall or <clears throat> next spring. Just come on down. Uh, we usually meet at the incubator. And uh, we provide garbage bags, uh, gloves, and like that. Coffee and, and donuts. Coffee and donuts. And uh, everybody scatters about the city and uh, picks up trash. And uh, just on a side note, uh, since COVID has happened, uh, I've been taking on, on myself to do a, a section of the city, so to speak, uh, every week. And I've uh, picked up garbage and like that. And... Uh, you know, it's amazing the amount of garbage that is out there, or, or litter, I guess you could call it. And now people are used to seeing Jim Fisher out cleaning up. Hi, Jim! Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he's the citywide detail person, you know. <laughs> he doesn't work for the Department of Public Works, but no, he's just... I'm just doing it as a... Um, public you know, service, a volunteer. Right, uh, because, you know, I have pride in Dunkirk, and, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, at least... It looks a little bit cleaner, you know, because people, for some reason, want to litter, and I think that's bad. Well, so now we're, pick it up, Dunker. we're seeing a prevalence of masks and things related right. to COVID. Everywhere I go, I see discarded or dropped masks that too, that, everywhere. Um, so every, it's, it adds another layer of trash, but yeah. that's okay. Which, you know, again, you know, that you should dispose of that properly, you know, I mean, uh, any of that stuff. Well, like anything else, you should dispose of properly. Right. Like baby diapers. Right. Nobody needs to see your baby's diaper mm -hmm. on the side of the road. Yeah. Um, take care of it yourself. Take pride in your city, like Jim said. I remember one of our cleanups, um, a number of us were around the Washington Park area a couple of years ago cleaning mm -hmm. up. And, oh, it was a horrible, raw, cold day rain. It was just miserable. But we were out there cleaning up, you know, trash. And I, a guy was um, on Park Avenue working on his car. Do you remember this story? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like he was replacing, replacing his carburetor or something. <laughs> and he had uh, car parts. And he asked me, he saw me with it. He said, are you cleaning up? I said, yes. He said, will you take this? <laughs> I, I said, okay, if it fits in the bag and if I can take it away, yes. Right. So anyway. A and, special service. And speaking of big things like that, heavy metal things, uh, from what I've heard, the Humane Society is having a uh, scrap metal drive or something along that line in early August. So if you have any big metal objects, you know. Like old screen doors and right. things like that. Hand it over to them and, uh, you know, that'll help them with their getting their funding uh, and like that. So. You know, you just made me think of something, and we haven't talked about this at the board meetings or at the general meetings, but I'm always on the lookout in the city for, or in the county, for, I think the college used to do this, SUNY Fredonia, but you know, if you have old computers or electronic 
or old televisions, things like that, that are hard to dispose of. You know, it, I think SUNY Fredonia used to have a, an electronics right, drop-off uh, yeah, day, yeah. but I haven't seen that for a while. I think last year they did, or it was canceled, I can't remember, oh, okay. but... Um, they usually do, and I believe the county does too. I, I may be the only person looking for something like that, but if, if there were a number of people expressed interest in a program like that, uh, maybe we could get the city interested or someone interested right. in, in doing it, and we could cooperate on something yeah. like that. So we're interested in cleaning up the city. We don't want to see dumped off televisions on the side of the road or... I all that kind of a few stuff. Yeah. Dump televisions. Uh, right. In places that. Right, I just and I, I have some old televisions I'd like to get rid of in my basement. Yeah. So, um, so it's just another idea. Um, another idea that we're we've all we've been very excited about, and I know we've mentioned it on the television show before, is revitalize Dunkirk's work with the city of Dunkirk, trying to develop the Battery Point area near Wright Park um, into a nature area. Yeah. And the discussions are ongoing. You know, again, we've, uh, we've been on pause, but we haven't forgotten about the Battery Point area. Uh -huh. And we continue to go out there and check, walk the property, which is approximately 13 acres. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about our hike on... Uh, that we took in February or March during the ice storm. Oh yes, it was a, a, a beautiful <laughs> wintry day. It was a crisp day. It, yeah, it was. I think it was like what ten degrees with uh, the wind chill. And we had just. It was the day after a big ice storm we it, had. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, but uh, we went out there. It was uh, Valerie and I and a few others, probably six to eight total, I believe, and. Uh, well, it was an adventure, to say the least. It we, wasn't a very long hike. <laughs> no, for some reason, I don't understand. But we did get to see that area in the middle of winter. And it was the, beautiful. Oh, yeah. In a very icy way. That's right. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we were determined to check out the area every season of the year to see what it, you know, what it looks like how safe it is, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, it's a beautiful spot in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Can you describe it a bit, Jim, and what's so special about Battery oh, Point? Well, we have an area out there that we've nicknamed the Notch. And uh, you go out there and uh, you take a look and you can just see out over the water. And it's just a perfect view of the lighthouse or and just beautiful, you know, like sunsets or whatever you can see from there. It's just... Well, what's special about the notch is you look over the cliffs over the lake and you can see the lighthouse, but what can't you see? Uh, the, the power plant, NRG, uh, which, I mean, to a lot of us, NRG is a landmark. It's there. You know, right. It's like, but to others, you're right, it's, it's an eyesore. Right. So right. it's sort of nice just to see the lighthouse from that, that point. So. <laughs> so we'll be coming back to you more about Battery Point development. And we do have an active committee who have been on pause for the past few months. <laughs> Why does that word keep coming up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's better than, you know, we canceled this, we canceled that. Yeah. Pause is, a, you know, a, a gentler way of saying, yes, we're taking a break. We're <laughs> on a little hiatus, but we're going to be back in back in the saddle, so to speak. Yeah. But um, another program that was very successful last year that we tried for the first time, and we were all geared up to do it again this year, was the Memorial Day Parade in Dunkirk. We did something last year called... Hydration Station. And what's a hydration station, Jim? Well, we uh, get... Uh, Popsicles, rocket pops, and uh, we handed them out our first year. We had a tent, like a right. covered area. Located in Washington Park at the end of the uh, parade route, and uh, we handed out the rocket pops. Drinks. And drinks to the um, particip participants, the marchers of the, in the parade, and uh, it went off quite well. I mean, I, I was amazed by it. Uh, there was even people dancing. and uh, Well, I mean, we ordered, I can't remember exactly, but whatever amount of 
the bomb pops that we had and drinks and so forth was just worked out perfectly. Oh, yeah. So everybody was accommodated. And, you know, the people who were most appreciative last Memorial Day, you know, obviously this year the parade canceled, but last year I remember the people most appreciative of what we did with having this hydration station were the band people who were playing the horns. Right. Because usually at Memorial Day, it's pretty hot for oh, whatever yeah. reason. And so if they're playing trumpets <laughs> down yeah. Central Avenue and they get to the end of the parade, they are parched. Oh, yeah. You know, and they were really appreciative. And it, it was a great thing to see the Little Leaguers uh, walking away. You know, everybody had a, a little popsicle and mm -hmm. uh, that. So it was a great thing to see that, you know, it was sort of like, you know, it, a little bit of community. It was great. And, you know, right. uh, we cleaned up. And I was happy to also see that uh, people were very cognizant that we had trash barrels and they were using them. And so we didn't have a trash problem. And if at the end, we cleaned up everything and everything was fine. So next year, we hope to Bigger, resuscitate better. the <laughs> hydration station. <laughs> And we'll be giving massages. We'll have massage oh, no. tables. <laughs> oh, you didn't know about that? No. Oh, wow. A, a little added a little added feature. <laughs> There'll be people lined up for miles. <laughs> G Jim and his magic fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's loosen up those let's loosen up those muscles, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim, another program that we have every summer that we're enthusiastic about, um, that again, we've kind of put on the back burner, but we're getting them back into gear again, are our BYOC. Right. Take it. Well, <laughs> BYOCs, or Bring Your Own Chair Sunset Watches, uh, we have... Uh, four of them over the summer, usually, not this year, of course. And we were going to try something new this year, too, remember? Right. In we, May. Yeah, we were going to have one on the pier. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. Uh, because it, of COVID. COVID. Man. It's, oh, yeah. Sanitize. Sanitize. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we were going to have one in May to start our BYOC season off on the right st uh, foot, but uh, it didn't happen. And then we were going to have one at um, uh, Wright Park, and that didn't happen. Uh, July, we were going to have it at Main Street Beach, but uh, we we're right on that line where, mm -hmm. well, we better wait another month. So this year, we're going to start our summer season in August at the Lighthouse with the BYLC. And that's always <clears> an excellent <throat> location. And, uh, you know, it's I, a gorgeous spot and right. it's going to be a Sunday evening, right. August 16th, right. correct? Yeah. And uh, um, it'll be just I, we've done it there, I think, two or three years now. And it's just every uh, summer, every August. It's just a beautiful spot for it. Uh, and if you've never been to the lighthouse and you live here in Dunkirk, you're missing out on something. Well, it's funny because there are people who have lived in Dunkirk their whole lives. And I know people who have never been to the Dunkirk Lighthouse on the wow. grounds. Mm. You know, they've driven by it plenty of times, but they've never actually gone in and right. visited the lighthouse. And I took the of official tour <laughs> last summer with a, a friend and relative of mine. And guess who my tour guide was? Yes, I am a tour guide at the lighthouse, a volunteer. Uh, and it's... You know, like in July and August, it's a long day because you're there from, you know, 10 to 4. And, uh, you know, but it's still a fun thing to do. You know, you get to meet people from uh, all over the world, basically, uh, that come to Dunkirk. Uh, there are what I call lighthouse groupies. And you can actually go up up to the top of the lighthouse. Right, right, yeah. right, right up there. Uh, when I first started doing tours and I went up in the tower and... Uh, the last couple of steps up to the deck, uh, I'm slightly afraid of heights, and that scared uh, stuff out of me. <laughs> and uh, but eventually, I got used to that. And now I just go right up and like that. But that first time, I'm like, "What did I get myself into?" <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, you know, it's a very informative tour. Uh, it's unbelievable to see, and just a few things uh, like the lens up in the tower. It's worth a million dollars as it sits right now. So that's amazing. So take a tour. Yeah. In essence, and you might get a tour guide, and the tour guide might be Jim Fisher. Yeah. And if you're ever thinking about volunteering, you know, as a tour guide uh, out there or, or like that, come on over because there's always a need for volunteers, you know, and uh, that's all I have to say about all that. All right. Well, even though we postponed and canceled or paused a number of events, we did still accomplish quite a bit since the COVID struck. Oh, Sanit no. Sanitize. Sanitize. <laughs> um, the hanging baskets have been up since May, I believe. Right. And the hanging basket project has been in play for three or four years now and due to the efforts of our very active and strong beautification committee right. chaired by Mary Reese. Um, so we uh, once again have beautiful hanging baskets throughout the downtown area of Dunkirk yeah. because of the efforts of Revitalize Dunkirk and um, I can't recall the exact number of hanging baskets we have this year, but it's between uh, 40 and 50, I think. 55, I believe. Oh, 55. Yeah, because... That's uh, a number of hanging baskets. Oh, that's right. All down 4th Street, uh, Central Avenue, from um, 6th Street to uh, Lakeshore Drive, and uh, so it's quite a few of them. And we probably, if we had enough boots on the ground and, uh, you know, poles to put them on, we would probably extend the program even further, uh -huh. but um, we, we're running out of poles to put them on and uh, like that. Well, everyone loves flowers, so, oh, no, yeah. so whatever we do, meaning the Beautification Committee does in terms of beautifying the city, or I call it prettifying the city, <laughs> um, everybody appreciates that because nobody ever has a problem with flowers. No. Uh, or, you know, well, s some people do have problems with trees, but I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> so we have gorgeous hanging baskets, thanks to Revitalize Dunkirk. And we also did something early this year um, where we planted trees also. Right. Correct? Right. I know there's a lovely new oak tree planted in Washington Park. Mm -hmm. And there were other plantings throughout the city. And again, that's due to Revitalize Dunkirk efforts. Um, another thing that happened earlier in the season was a very successful plant sale. Right. Where the Beautification Committee, they're all very into gardening and plants and flowers. And, you know, they're master gardeners in that group. And so they all donate, clip not clippings, but uh, propagation, plant, um, small plants wow. and so forth Gardening from words. their homes <laughs> and so then they sell these things and we had a big sale in the incubator parking lot behind the incubator and we had perfect weather that day mm. and we had lots of people and you know we wore masks and distanced ourselves you know we had sanitizers galore and all of that and we had lots of people there and it, it was just amazing uh, it started at nine and it was for two hours, and by 11 o'clock, we were basically sold out. Yeah. And I was just amazed that... Because the plants are very, were very healthy. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not scraggly little scrawny bits and pieces from, you know, somebody's, oh, I'll give a little bit of my aloe plant. <laughs> no, no, we're talking beautiful plants yeah. and flowers and, and so forth. Mostly perennials, mm -hmm. in fact. Probably all perennials. I believe so, yeah. yeah. And so because Master Gardeners are involved and Steve and Mary Reese, uh, no, everything was healthy and the specimens were terrific. So that's why it was a very popular event. And I know they've had one other sale and maybe that will be a yearly event. Yeah. I'm not sure because a lot of work goes into having oh, an yeah. event like that. But uh, they, they like having it at the incubator location, it worked out well. Um, There's plenty of room, right? plenty of parking, yeah. room to spread out, That's so right. it's perfect yeah. and centrally located. That's right. <laughs> in the city of Dunkirk. 
That's right. <laughs> All right. Another thing we accomplished this year was we finally have, because we've been talking about it for years, the need for Revitalize Dunkirk to have an, a real membership committee mm -hmm. to attract new members, to retain current members, etc. So finally, you know, we've had lots of ideas germinating in the past, getting back to a plant metaphor, um, <laughs> about, you know, things we should be doing in terms of attracting a diverse membership, because that's important to us. So now we have officially named two people who are going to be co-chairing the membership committee. Jim, you want to tell us who they are? Uh, well, uh, they are Tammy Bankowski and Frank Beach. So uh, Dunkirk people. Yep, and, and a uh, lot of people know Tammy Bankowski and Frank Beach, right. so they'll be great to co-chair that group. And at some point, we'll have them on our TV show. Uh, we were going to introduce them to the group at large, Revitalize Dunkirk, at one of our spring meetings, but again, everything went <laughs> south. <laughs> COVID sanitized. struck, sanitized. <laughs> so anyway. So we'll be hearing more about membership efforts in the future, mm -hmm. hopefully. And I know the board and the active members of Revitalize Dunkirk are very excited about having those two people as active co-chairs of our membership committee. Just one more note on sure. membership, though. This year, we've set a new membership uh, That's right. Uh, level so uh, we're up to over 60 members now yeah. so which doesn't sound like a lot but you'll have to remember this has been a very grassroots effort right and we're all volunteers uh, everything we do is volunteer hours and we do not work for the city we like to support efforts of the city uh, in terms of revitalizing the city and we advocate for things that will help revitalize right. our city. In fact, we, we do have a mission, we do have bylaws, you know, we are organized. Um, mm -hmm. We're an official 501c3. Mm -hmm. And what does our mission statement say, Jim? Are you ready for it, Valerie? Wait, don't, you didn't tattoo it yet on your uh, yeah, arm? Yeah, <laughs> I got my, <laughs> my notes. Are your cheat sheet? <laughs> Revitalize Dunkirk is a 501c3 organization committed to bringing planning ideas for improved urban living to residents and elected officials of the city of Dunkirk to preserve the her historic heritage, enhance the physical infrastructure, reinvigorate commerce, and boost, boost? <laughs> community pride. So there Read you Read it again more slowly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hope everybody got that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we... We just try to do things that enhance this community. I guess to boil it all down to one thing, enhance and get people proud, involved, involved proud. and proud of Dunkirk. Uh, right. Because there is a lot that Dunkirk has that I guess is taken for granted or is, you know, that uh, could show up, like the lighthouse and like that. Well, speaking of taking things for granted, we started a segment at our most recent shows called Jim you know what frosts my grapes oh yes remember uh, that segment uh, yeah and what frosts my grapes you kind of alluded to it are the naysayers and the people I call them the Debbie and the Donnie Down Downers <laughs> you know whatever's happening in the city they find something to complain about you know, good things yeah. can be happening. You know, the pier has been revitalized by the city. It's lovely now, lots of seating. But somebody else finds something to complain about. They don't talk about the positive things. They only find the negative. So what frosts my grapes today are those, I also call them itches with a bee, <laughs> <laughs> if you will. People who... Um, you know, always find the black side of a situation. Right. And what, revi the, what, what sparked my comment in that regard is the fact that Revitalize Dunkirk does concentrate on the positive. Right. Not that the city doesn't have problems and not that we don't have eyesores and, or things that need to be improved. We do. And that's why we do the things we do in Revitalize Dunkirk. But 
For those of you out there, we would encourage you not only to get involved in organizations like Revitalize Dunkirk, but any nonprofit organization right. in the city. You know, so get involved in Boys and Girls Club or Community Kitchen. I've got the wrong rural, rural ministry. Right. Um, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say that uh, many, as my experience with the Lighthouse and with other organizations too, uh, I've seen that there is definitely a need for people to get involved and volunteer. I mean, it can be an hour a week, right. it can be two hours a week, right. whatever. It doesn't have to be like a full-time job or whatever. Well, but. I find, don't you, Jim, that the majority of people in Revitalized Dunkirk are the doers. You right. know, they're the worker bees. They're people, they don't sit home and just watch TV and then grumble and complain. Right and write a nasty letter to the editor, but they don't do anything about the issues or the problems. So, yes, there's a little bit of grumbling and complaining at any, uh, any meeting in the city, but okay, get over it. Get right. on with it. Get over it, get on with it, right. do something about and, it. And getting involved, uh, whether it's volunteering with an organization or even you know, if you have a, a grumble about what the city is doing or what's happening in the city, uh, going to meetings at City Hall and like that. Mm. that It's important. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable the things that you find out or right. that you, you know. You have a better understanding how the city actually works or right. how organizations work. For example, um, I know Revitalized Dunkirk members we've been really good at going to as many meetings as possible. Mm -hmm. So when the Common Council meetings are open to the public, which they haven't been lately, right. Revitalized Dunkirk is always represented there in the, in the audience, if right. you will, because we stay on top of what's happening in the city and we always invite people from the city and from the public to our meetings. We would love to see you come through the door right. and attend our meetings also. Right. And I know there has been some frustration voiced in the past where someone has come to a Revitalized Dunkirk meeting who's ne never been to Revitalized Dunkirk before, and they come with a gripe about something. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, you know, on my street, you know, we have this problem. Mm -hmm. And our response is, well, that's good to know. And we recommend that you talk to X, Y, Z, maybe right. someone in the Department of Public Works. or Well, they don't like that right. because they want to come to Revitalize Dunkirk and they want to tell what their personal problem is right. and they want help fixing that problem. Well, we're a conduit. Right. You know, we can get people to the right people, you know, and we can kind of be ombudsman for an issue or a problem right. and get people to the right office or the right people. I know I had a, a, a older person once say to me, you know, I don't think I really like what's happening in the city. I said, oh really, like what? Well, they couldn't articulate what they didn't like, <laughs> and, but they were grumbling about, in that particular case, it was the mayor. And I said, well, have you ever met the mayor? No. I said, well, have you ever gone to a common council meeting? No. Have you ever gone to any hmm. event where the mayor's been present? No. I said, well, take it upon yourself. Go to a common council meeting. Introduce yourself to the mayor, whomever, whomever the complaint's about. And I'm not picking on the mayor, but um, like others do. But, uh, you know, introduce yourself. You'll find that people are approachable. They're interested to know who you are what your neighborhood is, what the issues are in your neighborhood. Yeah. People are interested and people will help you in ways that they can. Yeah. But don't just sit back and assume that you know that you don't like this, this, and this. Well, just because your cousin or your aunt or your uncle or somebody else has told you, yeah. you know, they don't like it. You and, know, and don't be one of those people. To me, it would be like frustrating or... Uh, it would just make me restless if I had all this griping or, or issues in my uh, my head and well, you know, some people you do something there are it. some people who enjoy being miserable also. <laughs> so there is that factor yeah. too. But um, so uh, and you can't change. 
people's behaviors mm -hmm. and thinking unless they're open to changing right. their thinking and their behaviors. Right. You know, and that's difficult, I know, for a lot of people, myself included, but you know, open yourself up, you know, go to a meeting or a, a rally or something to support some cause that you're also in support of. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't be a do nothing. Right. You know, get involved in your community. It's very satisfying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I think it is. I mean, volunteering like that. And, and likewise, uh, I guess this segues into Revitalized Dunkirk is always open to new ideas. Right. We're always open to, hey, did you ever think about starting? I know there are ideas percolating out there and we've been talking about them at board meetings and you want to mention a couple ideas or skirt around them a little bit that we're, we're, we're discussing in a very fledgling way, you know, beginning way uh... or not? I'll let you do it. Oh, oh, sanitize. <laughs> um, no, I do not want to talk about those, Valerie <laughs> Champlin. Uh, anyway, let's leave it that we're open to ideas. Right, and everybody has ideas, and, you know, we don't mind, you know, hearing your ideas. Um, you, you never know. Something might work that would be a perfect fit for within Revitalized Dunkirk that, you know, we hadn't thought about or whatever. So. Well, we lost, not, she's still with us in <laughs> spirit, but we lost a very active member um, last summer. A Skeeter Tower moved to Florida. And she... Hi, Skeeter. Hi, Skeeter. We miss you. <laughs> come back. And she was actually going to come back and visit this summer, but then COVID uh -oh. happened. <laughs> Sanitize. <laughs> oh, so that's put off her visit. But anyway, um, she's an example of a very active person who, if she had an idea, she'd run with it. Uh, and she'd run with it. <laughs> so a lot happened in the city of Dunkirk. 99% of it was very positive and uh, uh, that Skeeter was involved with. Yeah, um, she, she's definitely a spark plug. That's what I call it. And we that, need uh, more spark plugs. Yeah. And we need spark plugs from different age groups. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be a senior citizen group at Revolves yeah. Dunkirk. And a number of us are, you know, getting up there in age. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're still active and we're vital and we're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> but we would love to see some teenagers get involved and young people and yes, people in their 20s, that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it would invigorate us uh, older folk, I guess you could say. <laughs> yes, from, uh, the seniors. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we, we'd like to hear from everybody because, uh, you know, we value everybody's ideas, opinions, and like that, or just... You know, so we have all of Dunkirk. Not well, just you know, when, when we have certain events like the citywide cleanups, you know, we've involved the Boys and Girl Scouts and other youth groups, right. and that's fantastic. But what, what I'd like to see, and maybe membership can address this, is um, to actually get young people to join Revitalized Dunkirk, right. you know, our high school students and our young college students and get them involved in things that they're interested in right. too. And, you know, we want to hear some good ideas and then we need people to run with those ideas. So all of us have ideas, but it takes people to actually work on them and yeah. see them come to fruition. What's that, those words again? Boots on the ground? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jim's favorite expression, being an ex-military guy. <laughs> but you weren't even in the Army. Uh, no. <laughs> I was so, in the Air Force. I so. know. <laughs> so let's remind the folks that are listening or watching us tonight what a um, couple of things that are happening this summer that we want to see them attend. 
the BYOC, for example? Oh, yeah. Um, the, our BYOC is going to be in uh, August on the 16th. Mm -hmm. um, and the one in September, too? Oh, yeah. That's on the 13th. Of September, right. which is also a Sunday night. Yeah. And that's going to be where? At uh, the Point, Point Gratiot. And so. you know what's so great about the Point? Not only is the Point great, but what have we done at the Point in the past? Oh, yes. Uh, we've had bonf uh, a bonfire there. Uh, we're talking not a little gentle fire. We're talking big. Yeah, that, uh, the, the first year that we did oh, it, God. it was quite the, the bonfire. And uh, from what I've heard from the fire department is that since then, they've tried to make the uh, bonfires a little bit smaller. A little they, more contained. They, they light them, yeah. <laughs> because, uh, I, yeah, we have the fire department there. Conducting the bonfire. Yeah, they. they uh, it's not the revitalized Dunkirk pyromaniacs <laughs> <laughs> setting fires yeah. on the beach or anything. Yeah, me with a long <laughs> stick lighting up a. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, the, we're really appreciative of the uh, Dunkirk Fire Department because they come out there um, and uh, light the bonfire and stand by while we get to enjoy it. They enjoy it too, um, and like that. Uh, and then they put it out at the end of the night. And uh, we also, it looks like we're going to be uh, um, having a, a live shot from the BYLC uh, this year. A live shot? What is a live shot? Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, our show from the beach. Oh, you or, mean the television show? Uh, yeah. You mean this show? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Almost Live from Dunkirk, New York show? Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Valerie and I will be out there. Uh, Sometimes we interview people on the uh, yeah. beach, too. Even dogs. Even, <laughs> <laughs> it's even dogs. They're my favorite subjects to interview. Rover, what brings you <laughs> And they look at us quizzically. <laughs> but, and that's always fun, too, because, um, you know, uh, and it gives, gives us a, a way to publicly thank the fire department for putting on the bonfire and stuff, stuff like that. So uh, we like, you know... Uh, talking to people on the beach. At the so point. at least we'll have two bring your own chair right. sunset watches this and year. And maybe if I can twist some arms, maybe, you know, if, if the weather works out right and like that, maybe have some kind of, you know, uh, something in October or whatever. Oh, an Oktoberfest. Uh, yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, we, we should mention that we're able to bring the TV show to folks because of our sharp and snappy production staff here at the TV studio. That's right. Correct? <laughs> and I'm looking at you, Gabe. So thank you to Gabriel Taylor for helping us get this show working. And, you know, usually if, if it weren't f for COVID, we'd have the audience would be filled with our normal that's right you know and and they cheer us on and so forth and but, valerie would be going up into the audience oh like, yeah um, with a remote mic like yeah phil donahue yeah there you go <laughs> from the old days if anybody remember <laughs> yeah <laughs> those shows or um, silly jesse Raphael yeah. <laughs> with her red glasses yeah. yeah speaking of curious items yeah what what is that um Maybe we'll save that for yeah. our August show. Okay. Good idea? I, I think it is a good idea. Because well, we hope to come back to you the week of August the 10th, and maybe we'll talk about the Magnus, Magnificent Golden Diver at our August okay. show. I guess that's what... <laughs> we'll hold you in suspense until then. Yeah. But in our closing comments... We'd like to remind our viewers to be good neighbors in the time of COVID. <laughs> Sanitize each other. Check on your neighbors, on the elderly, on the dispossessed, the people who have physical or mental problems, people who are lonely. Hmm. Uh, it's a very difficult time in all of our lives, but for some of us in our community, it's more difficult than for others. Mm -hmm. So be a good neighbor, uh, be a good Dunkirk person, check up on each other, bring someone a milkshake. Yeah. You know, I'd love it if someone brought me a milkshake. <laughs> I um, have to remember that. <laughs> 
you know, just do something kind and thoughtful for your neighbors. Right. It's a very difficult time. I think it's going to be difficult for a while. Right. And yes, there's COVID fatigue. You know, we're all tired of it. We're tired of the masks. We're tired of being careful. Yes, we're all tired of it. But that doesn't mean we still shouldn't be careful. Right. Uh, New York State has done a bang up job. I mean, look at where we were in early March and right. look where we are today. So through all of our, you know, efforts, you know, we've brought the rates of infection way down in the state right. and the city's been doing a good job, a decent job also. So we in Revitalize Dunkirk, Jim, would just like to remind people, correct, to be a good neighbor right. and, and be a uh, good citizen. And right, and we're going to get through this. I mean, it's sort of like Valerie was mentioning that it's a, a pain to just, you know, have every day go, do I have my mask? Yeah. Do I have uh, this? Do I have my sanitizer? sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're going to get through this and uh, I think uh, we'll be the better for it. So Yes. So in closing, until we see you in August, Jim and I would like to say, well, quote a line from Ron Burgundy, stay classy, Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Good night. Good night.